article November 6th on Expressed UK, Earth faces 200 years of solar radiation blasts as magnetic poles shift. This is what NASA tells us. The Earth could be left powerless to defend against blasts of solar radiation from the sun for up to 200 years, leaving us at risk from skin cancer and worldwide electronic communications blackouts, NASA scientists warn. The U.S. Space Agency confirms fears that we may be heading towards an extraordinary event which would see compasses point south. Even scientists from NASA is expecting we are going, we will experience this major magnetic pole shift soon. Because if you remember, I posted one week or two weeks ago the White House is prepping for extreme space weather, very major preparedness, and they they will prepare it for coming years, one or two years deadlines, with deadlines on this preparedness. And now we do have this article. They do expecting magnetic pole shift. It's no joke. This is science. It's expecting very soon we are going through magnetic pole shift. Guys, this is a video that's got a lot of technical data in it, but it may be one of the most important that you've ever seen, and I want you to pay attention to what we're looking at. These are deformations in the Earth since 2009, and it's got to do with our poles shifting. Check this out, 2011. These hot spots are, are representing the affected areas. Notice off the tip of South America and off the uh, west coast of Canada. See that? In Alaska, 2010, 2011. These are satellite measured differences. This is a very rapid change. The data has come out on this now. It's highly unusual, and it's got everything to do with our polar drift and we're not talking about just magnetic poles anymore this is what we've been talking about the possibility of actually shifting the physical poles look at this up into 2015 this is in millimeters you see this these are actual raises and lowering areas of in the earth's surface telling us the poles are shifting our, we know that the Arctic vortex is in a crazy pattern. You guys in California are still cleaning up from mudslides and and uh, houses falling off cliffs and power outages. This is very important. This is a model uh, deformation patterns from 2001 January to 2015. This is everything to do with the polar drift. This is the Earth's pole. These are def the green line and i'm going to read the data that you're seeing is the average line the red and black lines are the x and y deviations check it out in the year 2000 guys these are polar abnormalities in 2010 was when the japan quake hit during that period after 2000 after that sudden change that in 2004 the great sumatran quake quarter million people lost their lives pull back up and I'm, I'll give you some of the explanations and show you the data again the green line average the deviation in these times now this is the latest chart these coordinates on this chart usually are 30 days old now we're dealing with both the physical and magnetic poles now that's got everything to do with the polar shift guys that's how much trouble this planet could be in that's how rapid now this will give just gives you the de uh, definition of the lines there your x and y axis the deviation your green is the uh, average of the model it says the importance to the accuracy of the geodetic time series is as follows first listen the rapid deviation of the poles since 2005 results in a uh, deformation patterns of earth which is inconsistent with the, uh, that experienced over longer periods you see that it's abnormal that's not the way it's supposed to be for example post 2005 geodetic site velocities are not representative of 20th century 
deformation rates, or even those of the full space geodetic period, 1980 through the present. Now, any of this you can pause and read. I read, guys, I'm going over the data that's, uh, it was many pages, I'm trying to get it down to a few paragraphs, but it says the minima of the degree, these are the deformation, is minus 2 to order minus 1, are lake located over Europe. That's the minimum in the South Pacific. With the maximum located over North Pacific, near Alaska, and South of Africa. You saw that in the bright red patterns. This now it goes on to say, and listen, this pattern is 90 degree rotated in longitude from the pattern of deformation driven by glacial isostatic adjustment. 90 degrees, guys. Everything's tilting to try to counterbalance. While Earth's magnetic pole shift doesn't exactly make the mainstream news headlines, it's not exactly a state secret either. 
For more than a decade now, scientists have been publishing evidence that Earth's magnetic poles are in the process of reversing. In 2003, the public got a huge leap in learning as NASA published their foundation article on how Earth was changing in this way. They plotted every position of the North Magnetic Pole over the last 175 years, and we can see that the 1831 to 1904 pole migration during the first 73 years was fairly normal, but that it was followed by a much larger jump over just 68 years and then jumped that same distance in only 29 years. The pole had been moving slowly for hundreds of years, seen in purple, pink, and red. But then the 1900s come along, and we go orange into yellow and green. The North Pole has certainly begun to shift. And while the South Magnetic Pole is moving more slowly, it is definitively shifting too, and has now left the continent of Antarctica, coming up in the southeastern Indian Ocean. Now the North Pole's position was not easily discernible on the Mercator map, so we'll switch to the Arctic view, zooming in so we can see that the North is breezing by the actual geographic pole as it speeds up towards Siberia. Please notice that the distance jumps get smaller there at the end. Also notice that those are predictions rather than actual readings. In the past three updates to these databases have all predicted that slowdown incorrectly. So let's not allow that apparent slowdown to fool us this time. The poles are shifting faster and faster. Part of Earth's magnetic system is the magnetosphere, Earth's magnetic shield. As if the shifting poles were not enough, we notice a progressive weakening of our shield similar to the pole shift. It's weakening faster and faster and faster. As of the year 2000 update, our field had lost 10% of the strength it enjoyed before the magnetic poles began to shift, and since then, we have noted further weakening, large breaches in Earth's magnetosphere, and then more weakening. In fact, as of late 2010 or early 2011, Earth's magnetism was down 15%. That is not exactly a great trend you want to see, and it continued with the 2015 data as well. As these poles continue advancing, the SWARM mission has taught us that the trend of magnetic field weakening is continuing as well. So where are we now here in 2015? 17%? 20%? More? While we're talking about the strength of the magnetic field, please know that it is not homogeneous across the planet. There are three areas where stronger protection is afforded to our planet by the fields above. One of those is centered in northern Canada peaking out around 60,000 nanotesla. A slightly stronger field can be found above Siberia, and the strongest field nearing 70,000 nanotesla is atop the southern magnetic pole. However, there is a weak spot as well. The South Atlantic anomaly, where the field protection drops to less than 20,000 nanotesla, and where the Van Allen radiation belts dip into the upper atmosphere during solar storms, and where the cosmic ray reading record was taken, is quite the thing. Swarm is already detecting single event upsets around the world, with the majority coming in areas where the magnetic field is weakest, far fewer overtop the area where the strongest fields can be found. So not only are the magnetic poles shifting faster and faster, but Earth's magnetic field is fading faster and faster. You would think a magnetic reversal would occur with one pole going in one direction and the other pole moving around the opposite side of Earth, keeping the poles pretty much on opposite sides of the planet, but that is not what we have here. The North Pole is heading across the Arctic towards Siberia, while the South comes up from below Australia. Because the North Pole is moving faster, their meeting place appears to be below the equator near the Indonesia Bend. This is also important because in February 2014 we posted the video called Disturbance Under the Ocean. The South Bali buoy, which was removed from public record the day after that video was made, was showing a dramatic seafloor rise of thousands of feet, 
indicating something was happening below our feet. And it happens to be where both poles are moving. Even more interestingly is the opposite side of the planet. The Earth can't have north and south poles in the same place, so if one shall remain at the South Bali buoy, the other one should pop out somewhere around here. I say somewhere because the magnetic poles are almost never exactly on opposite sides of the world, so it would be this general area over to the left just between the Bermuda Triangle and the South Atlantic Anomaly. Best guess for which one of those would get the pole is up to you, but the fact remains, our poles are shifting towards one another. Unfortunately, the end result of magnetic reversals is not such a happy tale for our planet. Our magnetic field protects us from the sun, which would strip our planet's atmosphere without the protection. Way et al. brilliantly correlated each of the previous great extinction events on Earth with these magnetic reversals. Because of the extra oxygen loss into near-Earth space, Earth is also at risk from major star water events, like Noah's flood might have been. The star water danger here is detailed in a video called Super Flood. You can also research Arc Storm to learn more about the smaller version of the Super Flood. There is a new danger now, however, that was never present before. Way above our heads, we find electric layers, magnetic fields wrapping around our planet. We've been talking about them in this video. If we lose our shield, we are at risk for a danger that can happen much more quickly than an oxygen loss. The greatest danger that solar eruptions pose to Earth is electrical. The sun can surge so much energy into the Earth that transformers and grids could be destroyed. We could be without electricity for years. This footage comes from the video, How to Watch the Sun. The short version of the story we tell there is that the sun can send us back to the Stone Age, and that weakening magnetic shield is what stops it from happening, and stops solar plasma from breaching Earth's protective layers and destroying the ozone and upper atmosphere. Extinction is certainly a possibility with magnetic reversals. Now, while many scientists admitted that a reversal was potentially underway, Others have yet to reach that conclusion, and those who had always thought it would take hundreds or thousands of years to complete. But a few Berkeley scientists just blew that wide open. In case you couldn't tell from the pole movement speed and the speed of the field weakening, at these rates of change, we don't have hundreds or thousands of years left. The official word is that reversal can happen as quickly as 80 years, a human lifetime. We're already a hundred years into this one. Coronal holes are opening up uh, vertically uh, from south to north. It looks like they're con connecting the north pole to the south pole. And we're just getting hammered. And um, these particles, if they get through, they will heat the oceans. They will melt ice. They will heat land and if magma chambers are shallow they will heat up your magma chambers uh, but this is what I'm referring to this is an article in 2005 2004 regarding how the ozone in the Arctic was 40 percent depleted because of the solar particles of 2004 well fast forward October 2015 we see a relentless assault by these mammoth coronal holes. They are supposed to migrate towards the poles during solar minimum, but the fact of becoming equatorial is still concerning because of the amount of solar particles that have been pounding us. I mean, we've had um, geomagnetic storms rated up to seven, and, and several of them uh, in the past six months related to these giant polar coronal holes that stretch up to the equator of the sun. But my god, KP index of 8, uh, and it's, it's happening, uh, not just isolated. And um, what is this doing to your ozone? I can tell you what it's doing. It's not helping it. Um, it makes nitrogen oxide. So those metallic oxides in the atmosphere are really there to pr protect you from these things. The issue really is, is that they're using a cheap form of metal, aluminum, which is toxic. This is just one more reason why we all need to be prepared. This is Dane Wigginton with geoengineeringwatch.org. Many people 
have felt how warm the sun feels on their face, and some think it's their imagination, but it's not. The ozone layer is being torn to shreds. Climate engineering appears to be a primary causal factor, not the only factor, but a primary factor. So today, I want to show UV meters that show how high the UVB is specifically. We're told that by all major agencies, WHO, the World Health Organization, NOAA, National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, we're told by all major organizations that no more than 5% of all incoming UV should be UVB. But we're metering this, and we know that that's a lie. In fact, we are seeing UVB levels that are 50 to 60% of incoming UV. That means the UVB is about 1,000% of what we're being told. So let's take a look at the meter and prove that this is actually uh, the UV levels, UVB specifically, are off the charts. So how we do that is we have separate meters. We have a, a about a thousand dollar omega meter here which measures UVA and UVC. So if you turn the sensor toward the sun and you get the highest possible reading, it, it looks like we're somewhere in the range of 4.31, 4.32 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So that's our UVA measurement. Now we're going to measure UVA and UVB, and we'll subtract the UVA measurement from that total. So with another meter, so we'll turn the sensor again toward the sun. This measurement you see here is a combination of UVA and UVB combined. So if we try to get the sensor directly toward the sun, we're getting something about 10.5 10 milliwatts per centimeter squared. It's measured in the same increment as the other meter. So if we have 10.5 milliwatts per centimeter squared and we subtract the UVA, which I believe was 4.3 milliwatts per centimeter squared, we end up with about 60% of the total incoming UV is UVB. And that's simply off the charts. Federal agencies are not telling us about this issue. They're not informing us. We can see the bark is being burned off of trees in many locations around the globe. Trees are dropping branches, which means you have a lot of dead branches with those trees. A lot of foliage dropping is occurring. We see plankton die off because the UVB is so intense. We have peer-reviewed study of whales' backs being sunburnt, fish backs being sunburnt, reefs being sun scorched. The UVB issue is, is a very dire issue, and it's imperative that we bring this issue to light so that agencies are forced to disclose this. It's a very serious human health issue. It's very serious for optical damage to the human body. Again, uh, the agencies appear to be basically putting out a fictitious UV reading. It's all collected by a central data collecting center, and the, the reading they put out on a simple scale of 1 to 15 simply isn't related to any actual measurements. So it's imperative, again, that people understand the sun feels hot on your skin, feels warm and intense because it is.